Okay, Steve, with AMD resolving most of its memory issues by ramming more cache into its CPUs and GPUs, latency in CPUs and bandwidth in GPUs, how much more can they do this before it becomes either impossible or too impractical to ram more cache into ever-shrinking processes? Well, at the moment, a lot of the... I suppose the question is the die space. You have yep. a, a limited amount of space, in a sense, that you can allocate to certain things. And obviously, you want cores in there. That They're kind of important to have some cores. And unlike an 8-core... Well, a CCD, so the core complex die, which... That basically that chiplet has eight cores in it, and it's something like fifty percent of that die space. That area is is allocated or occupied by L three cache. So for Zen three, right? Like that's basically the latest generation for Zen three. Yep. Yeah, for, for Zen three, right? So you have yeah the CCD. Basically, half of that is L three cache already. So I'd say that's a pretty substantial space. Obviously, the rest of it is mostly made up by cores. And then with the upcoming V cache, that will triple it, essentially, won't it? Yep. Because we're going from 32 megabyte on die to then 96 megabytes, so 64 megabyte V cache. So yeah, the you're basically looking at the vast majority of that CPU being L3 cache. So I think they're already stuffing as much in there as they possibly can. In in the future with this V cache, they may be looking to remove the L3 cache from the CCD. So the CCD will be primarily just the cores. And then on top of that, the next layer, you'll have your L3 cache. And I think that's probably ha where they'll be looking to take this. I don't know for sure. This is just a hunch, but that would help improve yields, which yep. then makes the whole, you know, the, it makes the, uh, the manufacturing process less complex, which then means that, well, it reduces the, the cost. So they can either make them cheaper or they can extend their margins. They'd probably go for the latter there, I imagine. But that may be something they're looking at doing. Um, yeah. And I think for the end users, it doesn't really change too much. If you're getting more L3 cache, that's going to, as we've seen, benefit things like gaming performance. So that's a good thing. Yeah, it's always a tough balancing act with adding more cache as well because it's not as simple as more cache equals more performance. You have to have a very robust mm -hmm. cache system to reduce mm -hmm. things like you know missed hits into the cache because it, it, as you mm -hmm. increase the the size of the cache it gets up and up and up then you're suddenly having to search more of that area to find the exact memory that you need the exact cache area so these mm -hmm. CPUs need to become much more intelligent about how they manage that for applications where you know maybe not all of that cache is required you're only using a portion you don't want to reduce the latency to access that memory so I think with these, right. these vCache systems, it'll be very interesting to see how all of that plays out, You know how robust AMD system is for, for searching into the cache and finding the required stuff. Um, and so certainly, mm -hmm. you know, they could go from 96 meg to a gigabyte of cache, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get, you know, 10 times the performance. It may only be in that small range of, you know, 10, 20% more. So yeah, lots of stuff to play out there, but obviously cash is very important. And I would expect it to continue to grow substantially, especially with you know node shrinks. You can put more cash in. Hope for the best. Yeah, as the core count increases as well, obviously it becomes more beneficial yep. the, the the more cash uh, factor. So and those cores have to be heavily utilized and all that sort of stuff. But yes, it, uh, it's basically how things are going to go moving forward yep. anyway. More cores, more cash.